Hello and welcome to this video abstract. My name is Margherita Matarrese and I am the first author in this open access article entitled Spike Propagation Mapping Reveals Effective Connectivity and Predicts Surgical Outcome in Epilepsy. This work was performed under the supervision of Professor Christos Papadelis. Epilepsy is a neurological condition causing recurrent seizures that can affect anyone at any age. Although most cases can be treated effectively with antiepileptic drugs, there are some patients who suffer from drug-resistant epilepsy and continue to have seizures even with medication. For these patients, especially young children, resective neurosurgery is the best way to reach seizure freedom. The surgery aims to remove the epileptogenic zone, which is the brain area where seizures originate. However, since it's not possible to estimate the epileptogenic zone directly, the most reliable indicator is the seizure onset zone, which includes the electrodes where most seizures occur. And to be defined, it requires recording of several stereotyped seizures. The gold standard to define the seizure onset zone is intracranial electroencephalography. An EEG recorded with invasive electrodes placed surgically on the brain surface or deeply within the brain. However, relying only on the seizure onset zone may not indicate the entire extent of the epileptogenic zone, leading to ineffective surgery. While waiting for seizures, we can detect interictal spikes, a key epilepsy biomarker in intracranial recordings. Spikes may occur either as an isolated event or propagate across large brain areas. However, intracranial EEG only records activity from tissues surrounding the electrodes and may not sample K areas involved in this phenomenon. We can improve spatial sampling of intracranial monitoring by using electric source imaging. This technique reconstructs the brain electrical activity directly from potential recordings, allowing us to estimate brain activity in many locations despite the electrodes covering only a few portions of the brain tissue. Several studies have shown that spikes propagate across multiple intracranial contacts, defining network, and their onset is a more precise indicator of the epileptogenic zone. Recent studies of our group suggest that electric source imaging improves the conventional uh, intracranial reading, and thus we can use it to better delineate spike propagations. Epilepsy is increasingly seen as a brain work dysfunction and can be investigated with network control theory. This theory involves assessing the directionality of causal dependencies among the time signals to determine how different brain areas communicate with each other via functional pathways. Thus, our goal is to study the relationship between information flow and areas involved in spike propagation. Moreover, we want to investigate if the onset of spike propagations can precisely identify the epileptogenic zone. We analyzed interictal invasive data from 43 drug-resistant epilepsy patients who underwent resective neurosurgery at Boston Children's Hospital. We identified spikes for each patient and classified them as isolated events if they were seen in less than three channels or propagating events. We generated several source maps by translating each propagating event in the source domain. These maps were then averaged to create a final spike propagation map for each patient. This animation shows a reconstructed spike propagation for one patient in our cohort. We identified three zones of interest, the onset corresponding to the initial phase of the propagation, early spread and late spread zones. Next, we extracted a time series from each zone and we used a data-driven model called Granger causality to calculate the effective connectivity, meaning the information flow among these different zones. We assessed the overlap and the distance between each zone and the resected area during surgery. Then we use Fisher exact test to compare the prognostic value of resecting these zones. We observed one predominant spike propagation pattern in source space for each patient. Spike propagates with a median duration of 95 milliseconds, a displacement of 14 centimeters, and a velocity of 0.5 meter per second. Our analysis of the information flow has two main findings. Firstly, in around 70% of the patients, the predominant flow direction is from the onset and early spread to late spread, with no prime direction between onset and early spread. Secondly, the flow is higher from onset to early spread in patients with good outcomes, but higher in the opposite direction for those with poor outcomes. Looking at the comparison with resection, we found higher resection rates for all zones in good outcome patients. The onset was more resected in these patients compared to spread areas. Poor outcome patients had less overlap with resection for spike onset with respect to the seizure onset zone. 
we found that only altered zone was able to predict the outcome, outperforming the areas of spread and the seizure onset zone. Our findings suggest that the spike onset is a reliable estimator in identifying the epileptogenic zone. Removing the spike onset may disrupt the epileptogenic network and its delineation can improve clinical intracranial reading, reducing the need for prolonged monitoring and enhancing surgical planning. Additionally, our study provides novel insights into epilepsy mechanisms, revealing that epileptic information flows from areas of onset to areas of spread following a hierarchical organization. Thank you for watching this video. A particular acknowledge is due to the patients and families for their participation.